Hello, welcome to Stone Magpie. My name is Suzanne and today I'm being a little bit naughty. Well, to be honest, it's so windy outside that the electric's gone off at home. So it's still morning, I'm ready for work, I've got my work fleece on and I thought instead of sitting there waiting for the internet to come back on so I could check my emails, I thought, no, I'll take the opportunity to do a little bit of this adorable crystal diamond painting. One thing I noticed was that when I use my cover minder straight onto the table, I'm getting like little scratches. I'm not sure if the camera will pick these up, but I'm getting scratches on my table from the magnet on the back. So I've had to start using one of my table mats. So do be aware of that if you're using a, a cover minder. There we are, so I'm peeling that back. Look, this is so pretty, isn't it? And I'm really enjoying doing a crystal diamond painting, a small one, it's only Diddy, and um, it's so much fun. And I'm actually using tweezers. Just open up my case here. Yes, I thought as I can't multi-place, I'm going to have a try with tweezers and so I'm enjoying using those for a change instead. Sorry, just had to go and get my little tray. Forgot. <laughs> uh, and I must keep my eye on the time because you know what it's like when you get into your diamond paintings and you lose track of time. So I can see I was doing this part of the painting here. So I've started there. Right, so let's get the L's, which is number two. Sometimes it's really good fun to change things up a little bit, isn't it? And these snack size diamond paintings are perfect for that, just to have a different diamond painting experience. So I'm using the Diamond Art Club tweezers, the needle nose tweezers, and they're so easy to pick up. One thing I would say though, is that it's a lot easier on a slight angle with the tray. If you try and pick them up where the lifted sides are, you'll struggle a little bit. If you turn and just do it on a slight angle, then it is easier. Of course, I am doing rounds, so I don't know if that's the same with square, because I guess with the squares, they sit without any little gaps to put your tweezers into. So I might have to have a go at this with squares on another diamond painting. However, I really do like multi-placing, so this isn't going to be um, all the time for me. I'm not going to be using tweezers on every diamond painting because I've seen these pictures of people who can pick up multi crystals diamonds with their tweezers and place them like a multi-placer. Oh my goodness, I have no idea how they do that. I mean, say I want these three here. Oh, see, I've already messed it up. <laughs> Let's try a three. No, see they're just, oh, I don't know. If you've got any tips about how to multi-place with tweezers, I'd love to hear. Because it does get rid of the problem of the pink wax, blue wax coming out of the diamond painting pens. It is cleaner in a way, so. Gosh, can you hear the wind outside? It is such a gaily day. So, it's such a windy day. We have had an amber warning for the wind today, so I'll have to be careful when I drive to work today. This is one thing with tweezers. They do sometimes ping away <laughs> the crystals. Have you seen these ABs here? Oh my goodness. 
They are sparkling and shining at me this morning. And as I was placing them, I just fell more and more in love with them. Every crystal I placed. So gorgeous. I'm hoping that I've got some leftovers for those. Oh, wow. Oh, that wind. Okay. Just edge that one better position. Okay, pick up my pinged ones from everywhere. Just two, not too bad. Right, let's see what that middle stone is. This one here looks like it's this one. These two are so close in colour that I really do have to have a good look but it definitely is edged in blue. So number 14, which is this big blue cabochon. Turn it over. There we are, gotcha. I really like this painting because it's got the different colour heart in the middle and even the heart here look has half and half the colours so it really gives a good effect okay so I'm going to start doing the heart here next just change my cover so that I'm working on this part of the painting You see, and you can choose where to start. I'm going to do these ones here. Number eight. These pretty yellows. How are you all? It feels like it's been a long time since I spoke to you all. I hope that you're all really well and getting on with your diamond paintings, having fun, trying new tricks. Do let me know in the comments what you're up to. Have you ever done placing with tweezers before? <laughs> Are you laughing at me when they ping away? <laughs> Have you tried, just can't get on with it? Or do you do tweezers all the time? Oh, I pinged that somewhere. Oh, there it is. Right, I'll do this little circle here. So have I been up to any adventures recently? Do you know, it's been fairly quiet. That stone magpie, it's, yeah, no. Oh. Did you see where that went? I've no idea, I might find it <laughs> some sometime. Um, yeah, I did go to a fancy dress engagement party recently, one evening, and we had to dress as hippies. So that was really fun. I actually think I might be a hippie deep down because I really liked the clothes that I was wearing. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> if I'm really honest, because I was wearing a glittery headband, I will put a photo on screen. <laughs> It was great because it really does disguise the wrinkles on the forehead. <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe I should do a headband every day. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, no, it was really good fun that night. I think sometimes when you dress up, you sort of leave yourself behind in some respects. The serious side 
just disappears so you can have lots of fun being something or somebody else. So I'm going to do these little zeros next, which is number three. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like if you're dressed like a fancy dress, you sort of take on a character rather than it being just you. <laughs> well, I do anyway. So for me, it felt a bit like before I was married, felt like I was freed of those restraints and just being silly with people and just having fun, having a drink, having a dance, listening to some lovely music. And, um, ooh. Yeah, sometimes quite freeing. I know a lot of the people in the bar, they were wearing wigs. Of course, with hair like mine, I don't need to wear a wig when it's something like a hippie night with my curly hair. Um, but people were saying, because they had a wig on, they felt really different and they really thought they wouldn't be recognised. And when they walked into the bar, it was a bit like cheers. They were like, hi. And so they were a bit disappointed that they were recognised so easily because <laughs> they felt so different. Oh, we're doing these lovely metallic for these purples here. Um, so that's quite interesting. Yeah, they were like, oh, did you know straight away it was me? <laughs> So I have to say though, my husband being in a band, he goes into this particular bar a lot on his music evenings and he had a long wig on. It was like um, he's got very, very short, very dark hair and he wore, it was like a pale gingery brown long wig and he had um, patchwork jeans on and like a hippie hoodie. He looked great, it was a really good costume. And he walked in and nobody, nobody recognized him. So he was at the bar where the bar staff should, you know, they always know who he is. And um, yeah, he was like, hi, whatever their name was. And they were like, who are you? And he was like, it's Nick. And they were like, oh my God, I didn't recognise you. And so, yeah, he got a lot of that. He really did look quite different. I think he looked quite Axel Rosy. Yeah, hmm, <laughs> he looked good. Bit too late for him to be um, growing his hair now, this stage of life though, because, you know, he's, he's a little thinner on top than he used to be. <laughs> Otherwise, I think he might have been tempted to have a go at growing his hair because, oh yes, the wig, he kept flicking it over his shoulder and playing with it, you know, like standing, stroking his hair. He really liked having long hair. <laughs> it was really funny. Gosh, these are quite tricky, you know, to place, but I think I'm doing all right. I just have to keep adjusting. Aren't they so lovely? Ooh, really nice. With those AB shapes and then the gold. Oh, that is gorgeous. I have flicked a few across the table. Just retrieve those before I move on. Right, two dots and number four. Ah, oh, really pretty pink. Ah, oh, so nice. I unboxed this diamond painting for my Valentine unboxing and I was really pleased with it, alongside another one that I haven't yet started. And I hope you all had a lovely Valentine's. Maybe saw friends if you're not with a partner or husband, you're not married. I hope you had a nice evening.
We didn't do much for Valentine's Day. Um, we just give each other a card and then it's a normal day for us. I suppose we've been married a long time and so, you know, <laughs> you know how it is. So, I yeah, I love cards though. I think cards are so precious that a lovely card means such a lot. And yeah, I got a lovely card, really nice. I nearly, very nearly told you a secret about something I've been working on and it wasn't anything to do with diamond painting, but I have to, at the moment, just be a bit careful what I talk about. But yes, the things in the offing, oh, there's a crystal that I lost. Ooh. Pop that in the lid, find that later. Right, the, this one is number 10. Oh yes, this lovely pink big around. Pop these on. Ooh. Ooh, the windows are rattling. I'd love to know what sort of um, gale force is outside. Might have to, oh, I was going to say, I might have to watch the news, but of course I can't because the electric's gone off. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it, how you forget that we use electric for so many things, the internet and the television and all sorts of things. So I keep thinking, oh, I could do this. Oh no, I can't, can't even put the kettle on. So never mind. In fact, talking about the kettle, did I have a cup of tea on the go? Oh no, I'd finished it. Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> Never mind. But you know, I wonder if the electric is off at work when I get there. Well, it might be. And so everything to do with my job being in accounts is um, on the computer. So we'll have to see what sort of day I'm going to have. It could be interesting. It could be very boring if I'm just sat there waiting for the electric to come back on. And I doubt I'd be sent home. Oh. oh, I hope they don't make us do a stock take if that's the case. Oh, I'm sure they'll keep us busy. This is a really nice colour. It's it's a bright orange, but it's got, I don't know if it's, I think it's more of a reddy orange rather than a orange orange, if that makes sense. It's a very mm, striking colour. And you know, I don't think I've done my log sheet for this diamond painting yet. Did you see my video about how I am logging my diamond paintings? I love it. I just think it's so useful. If you haven't seen that video, I will pop it in the eye for you to watch because I've done it slightly differently than using a book. And that's just so that I can swap pages about and I know each stage of whatever diamond painting I'm working on or what's in my stash. I really like doing it that way. But of course, it does mean that I have to swap the pages when I start a diamond painting and I'm not sure I have with this one. I may well finish this little bit of section and then go and get my logbook and see. I know that um, I was dying to start this one when I unboxed it. I did put it under the bed for an evening. Um, ooh, 
move because I don't want to scratch the crystal. That's it. Um, yes, to flatten it out a little bit. With it being a partial, when it's a little bit too folded, I didn't want it to create too much of a problem. So I popped it under my bed for the evening to flatten it a little bit. Let me go and get my log book. Okay, did I remember to do this as a start? Okay. Um, hmm. Ah, so I've done it as unboxed, but not started yet. Okay, so I need to take this one out. I didn't take a picture of it. I just did a very quick drawing. <laughs> And there's the other one from the Valentine's unboxing. So I need to pop this in here. Start date was the 15th of February, 23. There. Okay, so that can go in the started part of the binder. Great. I need to get a really posh pen for this binder, I've realised. So I'm going to treat myself to a nice pen. Okay, where were we? Let's do some dashes. I need to keep my eye on the time. What time is it? Oh yeah, I've got a bit more time. I think we'll probably finish this. And then we'll see what adventures await today. <laughs> In fact, I'm probably better setting off to work a little bit earlier than normal today because I guess the traffic may well be a little bit careful in this breeze. I call it a breeze, this gale. I do drive alongside a motorway, so not on the motorway because I don't like motorway driving. I go down alongside so if people are a bit worried about the motorway, the road may well be busier today. Ooh. Sorry, I was distracted then because just making sure that everything's okay in the garden. So have you blinged up a diamond painting at all with crystals? Because that is becoming a really um, much talked about topic I've noticed on Facebook where people are buying crystals and sparklers and things to jazz up a usual diamond painting so to mix them together is that something that you're interested in doing have you bought any special diamonds to do so I sorted out all my crystals recently into some storage. I'm hoping to have leftovers, especially of these AB marquees because they're so beautiful. I definitely would love to use those in something. Oh gosh, pinned again. Um, so, but I haven't as yet thought about how to use them in a normal diamond painting. I have had my mind on it. I think I've I think at heart I'm a bit of a purist where usually they are so well done from the diamond painting companies that I don't necessarily I think they do it so well but I need to push it out a little bit and have a go I think be really creative with something. So it is on my mind 
to do it, I think I just need to choose a really good diamond painting in order to do so. Something that will suit the diamond painting rather than just doing it for the sake of it. Okay, this is that number 10 again with these big pink cabochons. With these being a bit bigger, you could probably pick them up in your fingers. I just think it's a little bit more exact when you're placing them down with the tweezers rather than my big chunky finger ends. There we go, and the green in the middle is number 13. Oh, wow, look at this one to finish off. Oh, look at those. Oh, really nice. And I've got three of them. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh, I really, really, really want lots of these left over as well. Oh, isn't that? Pretty. Oh, lovely. Can you see just how it pops by putting in those few crystals there? But because the backing to it, these bits in the where it's still quite sticky, the background is quite muted. It makes the crystals really pop. Oh, I love this diamond painting and it was a budget buy really really nice oh you know what's happening i'm running out of time i really just want to keep going with it but i've got to get to work i will join you for a more thorough whip and chat very soon i'm sure in the meantime enjoy your own diamond painting take care everyone bye